All right, welcome back to the Cloud Church. I'm Robert Breaker, missionary evangelist and Spanish and English speaking people. I'm glad you're here with us. Um, we're getting close to about a year that we've been online preaching a sermon every every Sunday in English and Spanish. Also, every week I try to do a Bible teaching from a chapter of the Bible as we go verse by verse through the epistles of Paul in order of when they are written. Today's message I have prepared is called Seven Gospels. Now when I was in Bible school I was taught that there's five different Gospels in the Bible. But I also was taught that God always uses the number seven. There's seven resurrections, seven judgments, seven baptisms, seven thousand years of human history, um, seven this, seven that. There's lots of sevens in the Bible. So I just thought, well, there must be seven Gospels. So there are five that I was taught in Bible school. The other two, I might be stretching a little bit to try to get seven. But the word gospel means good news. And as I went through again and, and reread through the scriptures and studied, I found that there's seven main times in the history of the Bible when there's some really, really, really good news. And so I was able to get seven gospels. Now, if you don't agree with this, that's fine. You don't have to have the same seven that I do. I'm sure about five of them because the actual term gospel is used. The other two, I guess you could say I was stretching a bit. But I'm going to talk about the seven gospels in the Bible. And why is this message so important? Because sure as the world, there are many denominations out there that call themselves Christians that are believing in a different gospel. But, but, in their defense, their gospel is found in the scriptures. So why, why are they wrong? Well, the Bible tells us in 2 Timothy 2.15, we are instructed to study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, and we're to rightly divide, the Bible says rightly dividing the word of truth. What does that mean? That means as you study and you read the Bible, you need to realize where in the Bible am I today, and what does the Bible say to me? where I live. Well today we live right here. We're in the church age and we're in this time period at the very 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 end of the church age called a time of apostasy. A time when people are turning away or falling away from what they used to believe and they're believing something else. So when you study the Bible you have to say okay where am I? It's, like, it's kind of like when you go to the mall. All right, you walk in the mall and there's this big panel thing there and it says you are here. Well, when you read the Bible, it can be overwhelming because it's a big book. So you need to, like you do in the mall, look for that little sign that says you are here. Find out where you are in the Bible, what it says to you, and which of these Gospels applies to you today. Because you can go to hell believing in a different Gospel that's written for a different time period. God says it's this Gospel for today that saves you and none else. So which is the gospel today that saves? Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and we'll just start out with that gospel. It's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and verses 1 through 4. Now, people say, well, you preach this all the time. Yeah, because there's still people that haven't got it. There's still people that don't understand that this is the gospel of salvation for us today. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 says, More of a brother, and I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believe in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. So the right gospel, the gospel for today, the gospel of salvation, is the gospel of what Jesus did. It's all about Jesus Christ and what He's done for us. We're saved because the Bible says Christ died for our sins. It then tells us that He was buried. It then says He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. So the Gospel for us today, 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, is the death, burial, and resurrection, resurrection, well, I probably spelled it right, so I'll just abbreviate it, of Jesus Christ for our sins. And it's all 
to give us forgiveness of sins. You see, we're not forgiven based upon what we do. It's all justification. We are justified by what Jesus did. So we aren't saved by what we do. We're saved by what Jesus Christ did for us. And Jesus said to be saved today, it's by faith. It's by believing, it's receiving salvation based upon this gospel, trusting what Jesus Christ did for you. Now I could stop right there, but then I wouldn't show you the other gospels. So this message is presented to show you the true gospel of salvation for today, but also show you the other gospels that are in the Bible, because there are other gospels in the Bible but to also show you that those other Gospels were written in different time periods to different people that are not for us today. So, let's begin with the first of the seven Gospels. And it's found, well, actually in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 8. It's a Gospel that's found way back over here in this time period. But it's, it's a Gospel... Actually, I'd rather put it in a different color to make it a little... A lot of people tell me I don't like the colors you put in there. There's too much black and white and red. So I'll do this one in blue for you. <laughs> I try to be colorful. So this is the first gospel. And in Galatians chapter 3, I'm going to read verse 8. Galatians 3, 8. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Now, is this gospel right here the same exact gospel as this right here? No, it's not. This word gospel means good news. So there's good news preached today, and there was good news preached back then. But was this gospel preached to Abraham? Did God go to Abraham and said, Now you have to trust my death, burial, and resurrection on the cross? No. No. He couldn't have because Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection on the cross had not taken place yet. So what was preached to Abraham was what? Well, it actually says it in the passage. It says, saying, so the good news, saying, in thee shall all nations be blessed. So the gospel preached to Abraham was, there will be some nations, and those nations will be blessed. And they will be blessed by faith. Running out of room here. So this first gospel was a gospel preached to Abraham. And I'll just write up here Abraham's gospel, or a gospel to Abraham. And it was a gospel of being blessed by faith. All right? So this isn't the same gospel as our gospel today. Now to find this gospel in the Old Testament, it's go, let's go to Genesis chapter 12. And in Genesis chapter 12, in verse 1 through 3, we find God giving some good news to Abraham. And the good news God gave to Abraham was this. Verse 1, And now the Lord said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, into a land that I will show thee. Verse 2, show thee. Verse 2, and I will make of thee a great nation, and will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Now chapter 13, verses 15 and 16, to all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Uh, chapter 15, verse 5 and 6, And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars that thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. So this was the gospel preached to Abraham. And it was a gospel of good news. And God said to Abraham, Hey, if you believe me, I will do this for you. Notice it's not the same gospel of salvation for us today. We can't be saved by believing this gospel. Um, sure, it points to the gospel of Jesus Christ. It Sure, it points to this in the future when, when we're saved by faith. But it is not this. It just points to this. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 17 through 19. By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. 
Now, before I read the rest of his of this, remember what God told him to do, because we we see in this gospel a type of this gospel, and it's amazing that it points back to this in type. You remember that God came to Abraham and told him, of your seed, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. And then God gave Abraham a seed. His name was Isaac. And then God comes to Abraham and he goes, now take your son Isaac, your only begotten son Isaac, take him up on that mountain over there, and I want you to sacrifice him to me as a sacrifice to prove to me that you love me more than him. Now Abraham, he's in a pickle. He's sitting there going, you just said I'd be blessed and all the nations of earth will be blessed with my seed and that's my seed. And then you tell me to go kill him? Uh, does not compute. So the only thing Abraham could do was believe and he said, okay, if I do this and I kill my son with a knife, then God must raise him again from the dead. Because he promised that from that seed all the nations of the earth will be blessed. And that's exactly what we read here in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 17. Uh, well, 18, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. So when Abraham was taking, and it took him a three days journey, by the way, his son up to that mountain to sacrifice him, and he tied him down, and he got that knife, and he took the sheath off, and he was about to murder his son because God told him to. He believed, as soon as I do this, God's going to take my son and bring him back to life. And thankfully, God sent an angel and stopped him from, from killing his son. He said, that's all I wanted to know. And God said, all I wanted to know is if you loved your son more than me. And God says, well done, Abraham. You have proven yourself faithful that you believed that I was so powerful that I would literally raise your son from the dead. Now, what a beautiful picture that paints of something in the future that is our gospel for today. But Abraham could not have understood that. There's no way Abraham, after he did that, he goes, Oh, well, that's going to be Jesus in the future. You realize in the Old Testament, nobody even knew the name of Jesus? It wasn't until Jesus showed up that the angel announced his name. So all this back here was good news preached to Abraham. And it just so happens it was a type of the gospel. It was a perfect picture of something that would happen in the future. What happened in the future? God sent his son, his only begotten son, who died, laid down his life, and rose again for our sins. But you see, Isaac didn't die for anyone's sins. So, the first gospel was the gospel preached to Abraham. And this gospel entails a land grant. There's a grant that God said, I will give you a land. You know what this gospel is? This is a gospel not only to Jews, even though there are Jews that will have the land out here in the tribulation. This is a gospel to Gentiles, and it's a promise that will be saved by faith. And, by the way, we are Abraham's seed, we that are saved. We are his spiritual seed, and the Jews are his physical seed. That's a different topic. A lot of people don't believe that nowadays, and that's fine. You can go to Galatians chapter 3, verses 22 through 29, and find out that we who are saved are a part of the seed of Abraham through faith in the gospel, trusting in Jesus as our Savior. So that's the first gospel, the gospel preached to Abraham. And uh, let me fix this A real quick. It doesn't look very good. Everything else looks really bold except that. Okay, the Gospel of Abraham. All right, so the second Gospel. What is the second good news preached in the Bible? Let's go to Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 15 through 18. Hebrews, did I say Hebrews 13? I meant Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3 and verses 13 through 18. Hebrews 3, 13. Excuse me, I'm not talking well today. Hebrews chapter 3... 15 through 18. 15 says, While it is said, Today if you will hear his voice, harden, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke, howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. But with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? Now let's go to chapter 4, verse 2. Okay, For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Now what the Apostle Paul is preaching about here in Hebrews is a time in which the children of Israel were in what's called Kadesh Barnea. And this is a gospel or a good news preached to Israel in Kadesh Barnea. 
And basically, God tells the children of Israel, I promised to Abraham a land. Now you guys, and they were led by Moses and Joshua. Now you guys, you go out there and you receive that land. So there were some spies that were sent out into the land, which by the way was a land of giants. And ten of the spies were scared to death and said, there's no way we can take that land. They brought back huge, gigantic grapes. And rather than have faith in God, they said, we just can't do it. But Caleb and Joshua said, yes, we can, and we will do it. And they believed God, just like Abraham believed God. But the rest of the children of Israel said, we don't, we don't believe it. And for that reason, because of their unbelief, they were sent out into the wilderness for 40 years. And we come across an interesting thing that happened to them in the wilderness that, that once again is not the gospel of salvation for us today, but is a perfect picture of gospel of salvation for us today. It's, an, it's uncanny how many times in the Old Testament there's a foreshadowing of this to come. So let's go to Numbers chapter 21 and see exactly what I'm talking about. Numbers chapter 21 verse 5. And the people spake against God and against Moses, Wherefore have ye brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul, soul, our soul loatheth this light bread. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel did die. Verse 7, chapter 21 of Numbers 7. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned. We have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that every one that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass, and put it on a pole. And it came to pass that if any serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Now what an odd story. You know, if you're lost and you read a story like this, you probably think, Well, that's dumb. <laughs> and I don't blame you. <laughs> but what is, it, what is that? Well... God said, you guys are murmuring. You didn't believe me, so you had 40 years in the wilderness. And you're just out there complaining and murmuring and saying, it's all my fault when it's all your fault because you didn't believe. So here, and he sent all these serpents to bite them. But God said, now look at this serpent. And he told him, make a, a, a fiery serpent on, on brass. So it was a piece of brass with a serpent wrapped around it. Now what on earth? And then he says, if you look at that serpent, you'll live. What? So the people that were bitten, and by the way, the, when they were bitten by the, the, the serpents, the venom, the poison went through them. That poison was a type of sin. And to be cleansed or, or freed from that sin, that poison, they looked. And what did they look at? They looked at a serpent on a cross or on a pole. And when they looked, they lived. What a great preaching text from the Old Testament. Look and live. Well look how that perfectly fits the type of Jesus who was put up on a pole only he was put on a cross. And the serpent is the type of the devil who introduced sin into the world. So Jesus Christ type of a serpent. He who knew no sin, Jesus, became sin for us. That we might be made righteous through him. That we might receive the righteousness of God through faith I believe is how the verse says. So that lines up. It's almost a type of Christ. Just look and you'll live and you'll be forgiven and you'll be healed and you'll be cleansed of that venom of that sin. Look at Christ and live. So that points to the salvation in the future. It wasn't the same gospel, but it was a type of the gospel soon to come. Amazing. You can't find a book like the, Je the book that Jesus gave us, the book that God gave us. You can't find a book like the Bible. It's just amazing. So those are the first two good news or good uh, gospels in which the term good news, good news is used or the word gospel is found in the scriptures. Not the same gospel as the one that saves us today, but certainly we can find our gospel in type in those gospels. Well, we have another good news, another preaching of the gospel, and that's found in Luke chapter 1. And this is some really good news. This is something that's amazing because this is the good news of Jesus' birth. You see, God so loved the world that he gave. His only begotten son, like Abraham had his only begotten son. 
that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but receive eternal life. So Jesus had to do something. He had to come down from heaven and be born of a virgin. And that's exactly what he did over here. Jesus was born. I'll put number three here. And before Jesus Christ was born, there was an announcement that was made in which there was some really good news given to those that were alive at that time. And so in Luke chapter 1, starting in verse 27 through 33, we read, To a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came into her. So this is an angel preaching this good news to Mary. Hail thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. And when, she had, and when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and was cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. Well, obviously, man, if an angel comes up talking to me, I'd be like, what? <laughs> and the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and shalt bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. I don't know about you, but that's good news. Because that's the promised seed from Genesis 3, I believe it's 3.15 or 3.16, in which they were waiting for the promise of the Messiah. And this is the Messiah, the announcement that the Messiah has been born. Not only did God announce it to Mary, the mother of Jesus, but also to Joseph, the adopted parent or father of Jesus. So in Matthew chapter 1 and verse 18, we read this. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise when as, he was, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together. She was found a child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Now watch what it says. And he shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. You know what Jesus means? Jesus means Jehovah saves. Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. So in this good news, we're told that Jesus will save. So this is the great news of a birth of someone who will save from sin. And it says, Now when all this is done, that it might be fulfilled, which is spoken to the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall conceive, or shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. God with us. What great news that God came to save and was born in order to save his people from their sins. Is it, is it just me or is that really good news? <laughs> That's awesome news. Now the next one is with a man named John the Baptist. This was the, new, the news of Jesus' birth. But this one is the news of Jesus as the Messiah. This was the good news given to John. Maybe I should have written his name first. And this is what John was preaching when John came in his earthly ministry. So for that, let's go to John chapter 1. All these are, are gospels, or if you will, good news that was given by God to certain people. The first one was God giving good news to Abraham. The next one was God giving good news to to the children of Israel and Moses. The next one was God giving good news to Israel again that, that he had come to save them. The next one was good news, God. So all these are, are all given to Jews right here. This is all Gospels for Jews. Are you a Jew? How could you try to apply any of those to you? So in John chapter 1 in verse 19 we read, and this is the record of John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. You see, the Jews were looking and thinking, Okay, our Christ, the Messiah, will come. And they said, John, are you him? He said, I'm not him. And they said, Well, who are you then? And uh, he says in verse 23, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet 
Isaiah, or Isaiah, Isaiah. And they which were sent of the Pharisees, and they asked him, And why baptize thou then, if thou be not Christ, nor Elias, nor that prophet? John answered them, saying, I baptize in water. But there standeth one among you whom ye know not. It is he it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoe latchet I am not worthy to unloose. Verse 29 says, The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Again, in verse 20 and 36, look what he says. Well, verse 34, he says, This is the Son of God. In 36 he says, And looking upon Jesus as he walked, he saith, Behold the Lamb of God. What is Jesus? Why, well, he's the Lamb of God. Why is that important? Because God commanded in the Old Testament when you sin to take a lamb. And you had to sacrifice that lamb. You had to shed the blood of that lamb. And God demanded blood for sin, so God took that blood as an atonement for sins. So this announcement by John the Baptist was that Jesus is the Messiah and that Jesus is the lamb. Just like this announcement or this good news or this gospel was that he came to save. They all point to a death, burial, resurrection, and a man who came to save. That's amazing. So the next one we come to would be number five. And this, of course, would be... Oops, I did it in black and I meant to do it in blue for you. This is the gospel that Jesus preached. And now this might be a little shocking to some of you. Because this is the gospel that Jesus preached. And do you realize when Jesus came in his earthly ministry, he did not preach the same gospel that we preach today? You say, what? I can't believe that. Well, how could he preach the same gospel? You see, the gospel of salvation, 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4 that we read, which says is how you're saved, is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, how could Jesus preach that he died and rose again when he had not yet died and rose again? <laughs> Does that make sense? You can't preach something that hadn't happened yet. So when Jesus came, he preached a different gospel. Now, he alluded to the fact, and he mentioned several times in the gospel, they're going to come kill me. He said, I am the resurrection. I am the life. So he definitely alluded to the fact that, hey, he would rise again. But he didn't go around in his ministry and tell people, you better believe that I died and was buried and rose again for your sins. He never said that. What did Jesus preach when Jesus came? Well, the Bible tells us Jesus Christ said he came only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So Jesus came to Jews only because Jesus was a Jew. And when he came to those Jews, what did he preach? Jesus Christ preached the gospel of the kingdom. So when Jesus came and in his literal ministry, what Jesus was preaching was a gospel of the kingdom. Let me show you that. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 23. Matthew 4.23 says, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom. What is the gospel of the kingdom? Matthew chapter 9 and verse 35. You see, Jesus came preaching another gospel than the one that we today get saved. And the one that we get saved today was revealed later. It wasn't revealed through Jesus. It was revealed later. So all this led up to preaching about the Messiah's coming, the Messiah's coming. But the gospel for us today was revealed to a man named Paul, as we shall see, and is what we're to preach today. So what Jesus preached was a different gospel than the one we're saved by today. Now that would be hard for a lot of people to understand, but that's what the Bible teaches. So hang in there and just listen, and I believe you'll understand. So in Hebrews, uh, excuse me, Matthew 9.35... And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Over and over and over, the Bible tells us in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that Jesus went around preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Matthew 24, 14 is another example. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So Jesus Christ was preaching the gospel of the kingdom. What is the gospel of the kingdom? Well, there's only one kingdom. That's over here. Well, there's actually two. There's the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. But there's a literal kingdom in which Jesus, when he comes, he will rule and reign for a thousand years, sitting on his throne, the throne of his father David. 
So when Jesus Christ came to these Jews, he was preaching to them, this will happen in the future and I will reign as your king. But you see, the Jews, they thought that would be right then. And they were expecting Jesus right then in his ministry to march right in, kick out Pilate, kick out Herod, kick out Caesar, and take over the entire world right then. But you see, they were missing something. Something had to take place before he could reign. What was it? He had to die. You see, Jesus had to suffer and die for their sins before he could reign. Uh, I like to say it this way. The first time Jesus came, he came for the cross. But when he comes again, he'll come for his crown. So they couldn't see the difference between the cross and the crown. They didn't realize that he came. And they should have had they listened to John. Because John said, look, behold, the Lamb of God. What is the Lamb? A lamb is what you take and sacrifice for your sins. Had they listened to John and realized, okay, he's going to die as our lamb to pay for our sins, then they could have accepted him, then the kingdom could have started. But they didn't. They rejected him. And they killed him. They didn't want him. So as you read through the teachings of Jesus Christ, and you understand that he came preaching to Jews about that coming kingdom, it all becomes clear. You see, we're not saved by what Jesus was preaching back in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We're saved by what Jesus did for us, and we're saved by this gospel, and that's why we have the book of Acts. That's why we have more books of the Bible that shows us, okay, after this time period, this is how you're saved. You're not saved by the gospel of the kingdom. You're saved by the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, you go to Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. You find Jesus, when he's preaching this gospel of the kingdom, he's preaching all about... Here's what's going to happen in the millennium. It's almost like he's setting up his constitution for the millennium. It's going to be like this. It's going to be like this. And there's a lot of churches that don't understand this. They don't rightly divide. A lot of churches that try to go to Matthew chapter 5 to what they call the Beatitudes and try to say, oh, we're saved by works. Let's just be good people. And you read the Beatitudes, it's very clear that it's the gospel of the kingdom. For example, Matthew chapter uh, 5 and verse 3, Jesus is saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That's out here. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Yeah, out here. Uh, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Oh, well, they, they inherit the earth out here. So as you go through all these, blessed are they for this, blessed are they for that, blessed are they, this is Jesus speaking about this kingdom. So you see how that's different? Good news? It's good news that they will receive this kingdom someday. But the bad news had to take place first. He had to die. He had to go to the cross. And that's what they didn't understand. Look at Matthew 5.30. In the same context of Matthew chapter 5. 5.30, If thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Now remember, Jesus is preaching the gospel of the kingdom. What happens right before the kingdom, the tribulation period? And what does the Bible say? The Bible warns you and says, don't take the mark of the beast. Where do you take the mark of the beast? Your right hand or your forehead? So, if you are in this period and you take the mark of the beast, why, he's preaching the gospel of the kingdom, the way to get into the kingdom would be you'd have to cut your hand off and go around like this the rest of your life because it'd be better to not have a mark in your hand, better not have a hand, and be cast into hell when Jesus comes at Armageddon, than to go straight to hell. So do you, see, do you see that, what the gospel of the kingdom is? It is so important to understand this gospel of the kingdom. So Jesus died, he rose again, he gave them an opportunity. The Jews rejected their Messiah, the early apostles went preaching. And those early apostles were preaching about the same thing as John, they were preaching water baptism. And they were preaching, repent and believe, uh, be, be, uh, repent and be baptized. But then there's a change that takes place in the book of Acts. You see, the book of Acts is a transitional book. And all of a sudden, there shows up a guy named Paul. Why is Paul in the Bible? A lot of people to this day still follow Peter. Biggest church in the world, the Catholic Church, the Roman Catholics, say, we're founded by Peter. Well, that's a shame. Because the truth of the matter is, the church started with Jesus. <laughs> I don't know if they want to follow Jesus. I don't know why they want to follow a man rather than Jesus. But they don't rightly divide. They don't understand. Peter and the apostles go into Jews, but eventually it changed from Jew to Gentiles. And it changed from the preaching of the gospel 
of the kingdom to preaching of the gospel of salvation today. And that brings us to, well, did I get it up here? This was John's. I forgot to write up here number five, the kingdom gospel. So let me write that up real quick. I always forget something. So number six is what we call Paul's gospel. And this is what we started our study with. We started this study, Paul's gospel, by reading 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. Paul wrote some books. Paul wrote the books of Romans through Philemon. And in those books, those are the books for the heart of New Testament doctrine of salvation today. A lot of people today, they don't understand, why is Paul in the Bible? I've come across lately a lot of people on the internet that go around and they say, Paul is a deceiver, he shouldn't be in the Bible, he's a liar, and, and they, they just they want to take him out because they don't understand him. Well then if you take out Paul, what are you left with? Well, without the Apostle Paul, all you're left with is one of these other Gospels. Which, by the way, this one also, the Kingdom Gospel, is for Jews. So which is the gospel that we're saved by today? Well, we just read 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. This gospel here is what saves us. Now the good thing about Paul's gospel, it's for Jews and Gentiles. But all these other gospels are for Jews alone. So if you throw out Paul's gospel, you're trying to get yourself back under some form of Judaism, some form of the law, some form of going back to a, a salvation based upon works. So, Adam, I mean, excuse me, Abraham, God said you're blessed by faith. Faith in what? Faith in something future. So even that gospel pointed, you've got to be saved. But that point, that gospel said, hey, watch for this coming kingdom. That's Jewish. Kadesh Barnea, they were supposed to go into the promised land. And that gospel said, hey, you can have it, but you did wrong and you murdered. And so it pointed to a way to be saved because of they sinned and they looked toward the pole. Jesus was born, and the announcement, the good news, was he came to save. Who did he come to save? He came to save the Jews. Well, they rejected him. So God said, okay, Paul, I'm going to have you preach how the Jews and Gentiles can be saved by this gospel. Jesus is the Messiah, is what John preached, pointed to him, but said he's also a lamb. Had the Jews listened to that, they would have realized, hey, he had to die first. But they didn't want a dead Jesus. They didn't want a risen Savior. They wanted that Savior that comes in and sits down on his throne and rules and reigns. So when Jesus showed up, he said, all right, let me tell you about it. One day I'm going to be over here. And he preached that right there more than he preached this right here. So when he died, and it became clear that the Jews rejected their Messiah, Jesus said, now Paul, take this to the Gentiles. And in Romans chapter 11 and verse 13, the Bible tells us who Paul is and why Paul is in the Bible. In Romans 11, 13, Paul says, For I speak unto you Gentiles, and as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office. Now, are you an apostle today? Uh, are you a Gentile today? If you're a Gentile, you can't get saved by any other gospel. How about it? Are you a Jew today? Well, none of these other gospels will apply. The only way you can be saved is by trusting the gospel here of the death, burial, and resurrection. You see, it's all about this. All about this. Those were other gospels preached at other times. Some of them see, pointed forward to this one. But they all show, hey, this is the right gospel. So what does Paul say about that today? Well, let's go to first, uh, 2 Timothy 2.8, because there are three times in the Bible where Paul uses the term, my gospel. My gospel. And what is Paul's gospel? The gospel of salvation by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and trusting what Jesus did. 2 Timothy 2.8 says, Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Paul says, according to my gospel. Now, Romans chapter 2 and verse 16. We read something interesting here. Romans 2.16 in the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. My gospel. So Paul says, someday all men who are alive after Jesus died and was buried will be judged according to this gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. This gospel, Paul's gospel. 
So you better make sure you're not believing in a different gospel, but you're believing only in Paul's gospel. It's so important. Now Romans chapter 16 and verse 25, look at this. Romans 16, 25, we read these words. I hope you understand where I'm going through with this and hope you can understand this. Romans chapter 16 and verse 25. And of course, yep, there it is. Romans 16, 25. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the foundation or since the world began. So there was a secret that was kept secret since the foundation of the world. What was the secret? This gospel. Paul just said, my gospel. So all these other gospels were different. They all alluded to something that would take place in the future. But what that happened, what that was, was still a secret under those Gospels. So this Gospel, this revelation of the mystery that was revealed to Paul, what is the mystery? Let's go to Galatians. Well, there's actually, you can go to Cloud Church and check out my teaching on the seven mysteries in the Bible. But Galatians chapter 1, we find out that God revealed something into Paul. What did God reveal to Paul? Why is Paul in the Bible? Is Paul necessary for salvation as far as his teachings and his writings? Or are these people right in the internet who say, Paul is a deceiver and he whistled his way into the Bible and he shouldn't be there and, oh, you can't get to heaven through Paul. Really, let's look at Galatians chapter 1, verses 8 through 12. Paul says, But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Now that's interesting that Paul should say that because we're going to look at it in a minute. Out here, our last gospel is actually an angel preaching from heaven. <laughs> so Paul says, if you ever see an angel preaching another gospel from heaven, he's accursed. So even after this gospel, there's one more gospel out here. But the gospel that saves today is this gospel. So look what he says. He says, verse, verse 10 for do I now persuade men, or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. But I certify unto you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For neither I received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. He says, God revealed unto me the gospel. Uh, chapter 2, and verse one, uh, 2. And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles. So he says, that gospel which I preach, God revealed unto me. And then Paul says, I went to the early apostles and I told him, this is what the gospel is and what God revealed to me. And I believe personally that the apostles began to preach this gospel. What they once preached and they started to preach, they were preaching to Jews. But when they saw, hey, God revealed something to Paul, and that's what God said for salvation, I believe the book of Acts shows clearly that they said, okay, we're going to start preaching that. So that's why Paul is in the Bible to give us the right gospel of salvation today. You see, we're no longer under the gospel of the kingdom, and we're not saved by the gospel of the kingdom. We're not saved by John's good news that Jesus is the Messiah. Just because you believe Jesus is the Messiah doesn't mean you're saved. If you believe Jesus is the Messiah, good for you, you're trusting in who Jesus is. But just knowing who Jesus is isn't enough to save you. This gospel, Paul's gospel of salvation, isn't just trusting in who Jesus is, it's trusting in what Jesus did for you. And what did Jesus do? He died, was buried, and rose again the third day. He did this. It's the finished work of Jesus Christ. It's what he did, and we trust by faith in what he's done for us. Just believing Jesus was the Messiah isn't enough to be saved. Yet when the church started, that's what they preached. Believe in the name of Jesus. Trust in Jesus. He is your Messiah. And they believed in Jesus. They believed in Him as their Messiah. But God revealed unto Paul, look, that's not enough. You have to now trust in my sacrifice, my sacrificial blood atonement. So we find this gospel. Now let's go to uh, Romans chapter 1. You can't read through the books of Paul without realizing that Paul was special. He was someone that God said, I'm going to choose you to give you something to take to the world. world. Romans 1.1, 1, 1, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle and separated unto the gospel of God. So God called him and separated him unto the gospel. In Acts chapter 20, verse 24, 
We see this, Acts 20, 24. None of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Now, all you people that say Paul shouldn't be in the Bible, he just said that God gave him a ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus. So you want Paul to not be in the Bible, you're fighting Jesus. Because Paul says that Jesus gave him this ministry to preach this gospel. So this gospel is from Jesus Christ himself. So this gospel, Paul's gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, is our gospel from Jesus for us, Gentiles and Jews alike, in the church age, for us today. Let me read 1 Timothy 1, 11. That's why it's so important to read the books of Paul. Uh, 1 Timothy 1, 11 says, According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God which was committed to my trust. Paul says, God committed to my trust this gospel, the only gospel that can save us, the gospel of trusting what Jesus did, his death, burial, resurrection for our sins, and by that we are forgiven, we have justification through faith. So this is the gospel of salvation for us today. What's the last gospel? Well, this last gospel is called the everlasting, get the right color here, everlasting gospel. You know, it's so sad that people do not read the Bible. And it's so sad when they do read the Bible and don't understand it. Because most churches deny the gospel of Paul in favor of another gospel. Now this everlasting gospel here is a gospel that will be preached in the tribulation period. It's out here. This is the everlasting gospel. And it's preached by an angel from heaven. Now remember what we just read in, in Paul's writings in Galatians chapter 1? He said, that oh, I or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which you've preached, let him be accursed. So obviously this gospel can't be preached today. It has to be preached in a different time period. And it's preached after the rapture. So this gospel of Paul goes all the way to the rapture. So until the rapture comes, this is the way that we today are saved by this gospel, the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ, trusting the finished work of Jesus. Now, Revelation chapter 14, 6, we find the everlasting gospel. And verse 7, it says, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel, to preach unto them which dwell on the earth, and to every nation, and kindred, and tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, So here's the gospel. Here's what it is. Fear God, and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment has come, and worship Him that made heaven and earth, and the sea, and the foundations of the waters. So, this gospel is in the tribulation period. An angel preaches it, and this gospel is, give God glory, fear Him, worship Him, because His hour has come. We cannot be saved by that gospel. Now, let me tell you how sad it is. I've been to about 200 different churches preaching and very few did I find that preached the right gospel, the gospel of Paul. I've been to many churches that were Baptist churches. Most of the churches I visited were Baptist. I'm an ordained Baptist minister, independent Baptist minister. Uh, I'd rather call myself a Bible believer. Because <laughs> a lot of Baptists, they don't believe what I just showed you today. And a lot of Baptists, they spend their time in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John preaching this gospel of the kingdom. Southern Baptists are the worst. You go to Southern Baptist Church and they take up the offering and they say, Brother so-and-so, would you pray? And he says, Oh God, we just pray that you'd help us to bring in your kingdom. What? what we're going to bring in the millennium? No, Jesus brings that in himself. What are they talking about? So, a lot of people don't rightly divide and don't understand. One time I went to a church and my wife and I would pull up into this church parking lot and we look at the church sign. And as soon as I look at the church sign, I just kind of shook my head and dropped it down. Because this church sign says, Welcome to so-and-so Baptist Church. And then on the very bottom, in big letters, it says, Preaching the Everlasting Gospel. Now, I'll just chalk it up to ignorance. I didn't have the heart to, to tell them they were wrong. But if they are preaching the Everlasting Gospel, they're preaching a gospel that applies only to the Tribulation. They're not preaching the correct gospel of Jesus Christ given to us through the Apostle Paul. Well, we went back several years later and the sign was down. I can only hope they realized their error, <laughs> that they were preaching a different gospel, an accursed gospel today, because that gospel, the everlasting gospel, is the gospel preached by an angel, and Paul said, let him be accursed. 
He's not a curse then, but he's a curse now, if you try to preach that today. So there are many, many churches in the world today that don't understand this teaching. And until you understand it, you can't be saved. We read Romans 2.16. Paul said that someday everyone will be judged according to his gospel. This is the gospel of salvation, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. That very same church that I told you about that I visited, I remember sitting there in the, in the uh, house next to the church where they let missionaries stay, and there were two or three other missionaries there. We began talking, and one of those missionaries said, Well, that guy over there, he's so-and-so, he's too Pauline. <laughs> and he tries to follow Paul instead of following Jesus. Now, when he said that, I just scratched my head and said, What on earth is this man talking about? Following Paul instead of following Jesus? There's three times in the Bible when Paul says to follow him. Paul says he's our apostle. Paul says the only way to salvation is through the gospel that Jesus revealed to him. So the only way today to follow Jesus is to follow the writings of Paul. So what on earth did this man mean he was following Paul instead of Jesus? When you follow Paul, you are following Jesus. Well, I guess the man believes in the kingdom gospel that Jesus preached. But if you go preach that today, nobody's going to get saved. You don't get saved by the kingdom gospel. The kingdom gospel is the good news that someday Jesus will reign in the millennium. Well, good. That's wonderful news. I'm glad to hear it. But how does that save you? If you die knowing that, you'll go straight to hell because you've rejected this gospel. So sadly, there's a lot of people out there, many of them ministers and missionaries and evangelists, who don't rightly divide the word of truth, don't understand the Bible, and they're preaching one of these other gospels rather than the right gospel, the one that God gave us today for salvation. This is the way to be saved. This is what I call the blood-stained gospel. The only gospel of salvation. With that stated, I'll close with 1 Peter 4, 17. A great verse. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17. You see, many people are preaching another gospel in other churches today. That's why I like this verse, 1 Peter 4, 17, for it says, For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God, the church. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? This gospel of salvation. What will be the end of those people be who don't come to Jesus through this gospel? Well, the end will be hell. They'll go to hell trusting in a gospel, just not the right gospel. This is the only gospel that leads to heaven. I've given you seven different gospels today. And there's so many different denominations of so-called Christians in the world today. And all of them have one of these other gospels. But which is the one that saves? That's the question. So I'll close with this. Which of these Gospels do you trust in for salvation? Well, I was, I was brought up a, a Catholic, so uh, I, I'm trusting uh, as a Catholic in, in uh, salvation um, by the church. And so I'm following Peter, and uh, I'm believing that salvation is by works, and what I do, okay, you've got a different Gospel. When did you come to this Gospel? You see, this gospel is not of works, lest any man should boast. This is trusting the finished work of Jesus Christ. Well, I'm a Seventh-day Adventist, okay, so you're still under the law. The Bible says the law and the prophets are until John. And the Bible says Christ is the end of the law to all who believe. Galatians says that Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. So you're under another gospel. Wrong, wrong gospel. You need to come to this gospel. Not saved by the law saved by faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Well, I'm a Pentecostal, and I've always been taught that you have to believe in Jesus, but then do works and endure to the end. <laughs> Sorry, wrong gospel over here in the tribulations where you endure to the end. We're not saved by enduring to the end. The Bible says when we trust the gospel in Ephesians 1.13, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. That means we have the Holy Spirit, and we can't lose it. We're sealed. But over here, someone can lose it lose their salvation. You see how all the different denominations, they always twist the scriptures. And they all have something in common. It's like they all want to say, well, let's just omit Paul and believe anything else in the Bible. <laughs> Why do they do that? Could it be they're led by Satan? And Satan is taking the Bible and trying to get them to believe in anything but the very thing that we are told to believe in? The very thing that God said we will be judged by? 
the very thing that in the Bible says is the way to be saved. So there's the message today. If you're saved, I praise God. I hope you're preaching the message of salvation through the writings and through the gospel that God revealed unto Paul. Now you see, there's people that go too much to an extreme with this. They're called hyper-dispensationalists, or, or that's the term that people lay upon them. I'm not one of them. I'm just a Bible believer. I don't overly divide. I rightly divide. So I'm not trying to, to tell you something that's anti-scriptural or anti-biblical. I'm trying to tell you something that is biblical. What's interesting to me is way back here in the early part of the church, 200, 300, 400 years after Jesus, you know what the early Christians were called? They were given a name by the Catholic Church that persecuted them and killed them. You know what they were called? I'll write it out here. Paulicians. <laughs> Why were they called Paulicians? Because they were dogmatic. Hey, salvation is through the Gospel of Paul. And we as Christians are following Romans through Philemon, the parts of the Bible that are written to us today. I knew a guy one time that was a Methodist. And he said that they were very against the writings of Paul. And he began to hear the truth and listen to the Gospel and get saved. And, and they said, well, you're just too Paul, Pauline. You just get out of here. You're not one of us. You're not Paul. You're too Pauline. Is that even possible? Why would they say that? Because they want to follow the early ministry of Jesus. And they want to say, oh, I can get saved through the Beatitudes. And blessed if I do this and I do that. And they want a works gospel. And they want this gospel instead of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I appreciate you're watching this video today. I hope it's been a blessing to you. I hope if you're not saved, that you get saved today through trusting the gospel of Paul. And if you are saved, please remember this video. Please pass it out to others. I mean, forward it to people, email it, share it. People need to hear this message because this is the message of salvation today. Now watch this. Very, very shortly, the rapture is coming. And then it will be too late for this message. And if you miss the rapture. You're not going to be saved by Paul's gospel anymore. Now it's going to go back to these gospels. Now it's going to be back to follow Jesus, endure to the end, do works, don't take the mark of the beast. And it's going to be really hard to be saved in that tribulation time. I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy, going through the things the Bible calls are the wrath of God. So it's best to get saved today. And this is the greatest time in history ever. This is the only time you can be saved by simply grace through faith. Just simply trusting what Jesus did for you. It's not what you do to get you saved. It's what Jesus Christ did for you. So I thank you for listening. look forward to you coming back next week to the Cloud Church. Like I said, new sermon every week in English and Spanish. And we want to see you there. God bless.